Hello again everyone. Well, you join me for yet another video. I'm having a bit of a, a vacuum cleaner marathon at the moment and to be quite honest, I'm sick of it. But my dedication to providing my viewers with what you want to see is forcing me to do this video despite the fact that I'm desperate for something to eat, I'm desperate to sit down I'm just desperate for a life without these vacuums. But anyway, here I am with yet another... It's a semi-unboxing because this has been unboxed before, but never on this channel. And it's part of my classic collection of videos where I'm revisiting some old favourites, some cleaners that have featured on my channel before, but have never had the high-definition treatment. And as you can see behind me, I have a few of my friends out to watch this charade unfold. No, you can't quite see the cleaner, can you? Because it's lying at my feet. You know what it is, but here it is anyway. Yes, look, it's a Hoover Turbo Power in its original but rather plain box. Unfortunately, it's not a classic Turbo Power with the headlight and air freshener. It's one of the down market, budget, cheapo turbo powers, but nevertheless, I do have trouble getting my tongue around my R's. Nevertheless, good viewers, it is more or less mint, barely used, and not quite factory fresh, but it's as good as it gets in this day and age. Do you want to see it? All right then, just for you, I'll get it out. Well, the last time I set eyes on this turbo power, I think, was when I made the last video. I don't know when that was. It's at least, at least two years ago. It could be three. I've added some extra protection inside the box as well. Now let's just take out this. Da -da -da -da. Bit of polystyrene. And the first thing to reveal is the handle. This is the same colour as my almost mint Turbo Power 2, which happens to be watching this party. Here she is. Again, I've featured this. I've updated the video for this cleaner. It might have gone live on my channel by the time you see this. I don't know yet. Anyway, here is the handle. The first example of it being cheapened is no nice shiny red Hoover roundel. Just, I'm not sure if that's in focus, just a Hoover embossed nameplate thingy majiggy. Okay, that's the correct way. I'm going to give birth to this turbo power once more should have washed my hands, need some long gloves on. So I'm going to do a James Herriot, for any of you familiar with All Creatures Great and Small. The actor who played James Herriot was forever arm deep in uh, a cow's bottom. But what he does with his spare time is up to him. I don't know why I had people filming it though, but I don't know why I'm filming this. Well, because you're watching, so there we go. It's like that old saying, if a tree falls in the woods, does it make a sound? Oh no. Nearly right, Roger. If a tree falls in the woods and no one's around, does it make a sound? Well, we don't know. And if I unbox a vacuum cleaner and there's nobody to see it, what's the point? But obviously, there is an audience for this sort of thing. Lucky for me, otherwise I don't know if I'd be doing this. I'd still be buying vacuum cleaners and I'd still be unboxing them, but it's highly unlikely I'll be filming it. As you can see, extra protection has been given to this lovely little turbo power. I'm afraid she's in for a bit of dirt. Mm. I have used this a couple of times when I first got it, but uh, not, you know, to any great degree to any great extent. All right, let's just take that off. It's a 500 watt turbo power. 
that I'm about to... Oh, look, I've taped it up and everything. Oh, aren't you pretty? She's pretty, isn't she? Hey, she's lovely. <sighs> oh dear, that's curled up, hasn't it? Oh, there's, how can there be dust on that? Must have been dust on it when I put it in the box. I don't know how. There is a bag. Now the rating sticker. I think it was curling before actually. I'm not sure if I tried sticking it down that it's, uh, it's curling up. I'll try and show you that. I've shown you it in the other video, but anyway, it's in high definition now, so you might be able to see it in a bit more detail. Unfortunately, my eyes aren't in high definition, so it probably just look the same to me. So, the flex... Oh, a bit creaky. They always were creaky. The flex... Oh, look, I've left that on too. Isn't that good? Left the protector on the plug. Put that to one side. I want to keep that. Now, the flex isn't wrapped around the cleaner because there is no, well there is flex storage, but only a top hook. This is so cheap that Hoover decided they wouldn't put the lower hook, there's just a blank blanking piece there. There would have been a little doobly thing, a hook that sits flush, but it would pull out in order for you to wind it up. I think you can still get those, but it'd be in a generic black colour. And often you'd find on older models the um, hook broke off because people were a bit too a bit too rough with them. You see, you must treat things gently or they break. So I need to attach the handle. It's got two screws. One screw there that I've left in the handle for safekeeping. And the other screw is just here, look which again I've left in there for safekeeping. So I'll take that out and take out the screw from the handle, put, put them to one side, open the bag door, whoops, and carefully and ever so gingerly press the handle into the top of the bag housing and it's going to make an awful click. Wouldn't it be awful if I broke it? I don't know how I'd cope. Now hang on, I'm going to have to move it towards me a bit. So you're not going to quite see what I'm up to. Ah, oh, there we go. Should have stood up for it. But there we go. Push, push. Never force it, especially... Especially... Well, this is vintage. It's not what some people would call vintage, but... I'm not that old. I class this as a sort of a vintage vacuum. It's better than a lot of the vacuums you buy now. Now, where have I put my screwdrivers? Please pardon me while I go and get to my screwdrivers. I should have been prepared. I do apologise. Hiya. Oh, uh, did you miss me? Did you? I'm sure you did. I'd miss me if I was gone, you know. At least I like myself. Oh, is that not always oh, is going to is it? Oh, dear, I don't think is I don't think this is going to work this particular screwdriver. It needs oh it needs a normal one, doesn't it? Well let me just see if it'll come out the screw. Well it is in but it's not it's not tightened. I will have to leave it like that, but I'll be careful. Obviously I'm not going to lift the machine by the handle, so for the purpose of this demo, I'm sure the vacuum will forgive me for not screwing it up properly. Now then, um, right here it is, fully assembled, it didn't take long. I think in order for us to appreciate the beauty of this vacuum, I'm going to get behind the camera and take you on a guided tour. Well, here she is, model U1050, turbo power, made in Cambuslang, Scotland. Naturally, that factory is no more. I don't know what it is now, if anything. There was talk that the site was going to be developed and 
there's going to be a supermarket there but who knows so here she is I have to have the light on it's getting a bit dark a bit overcast outside so hopefully we can still see everything so we've got the familiar Hoover height right control so if I just adjust it Ooh. so obviously we have the very low pile setting for your very short pile carpets then the next is for your normal not sure what that dot signified I can't remember if you remember why don't you comment not sure anyway that's for your normal piles and then you've got sort of medium pile midway now I know it sounds a little bit I don't know odd but whenever I used to photograph my vacuums and things I always had to have the height control if the vacuum had a height control I always had to have it in the middle just I like things symmetrical you see so anyway that's the medium height and then for long pile carpet and oh I was going to say and tools use but of course not and tools use because the tools are fitted underneath anyway with the pan converter that's just reminded me I've got that tool kit haven't I I'm going to show you the toolkit with this as well. That was what I was going to do. So there we go. So it doesn't matter what height you've got it on for the tools for this model because the tools actually fit underneath using the pan converter. Moving on up a little bit at the base of the bag door. I hope that's in focus. My eyes aren't in focus at the moment, so I'm not sure. But anyway, hopefully you can see that and you can read that, that at one point of time, the Queen decided to give Hoover a royal appointment. Electrolux had one as well, but Hoover had one by appointment to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, manufacturers of vacuum cleaners and laundry equipment, Hoover Limited, Mertha Tidfill. That used to say Hoover Limited. Perivale Middlesex, I think, when they used to manufacture in Perivale. Okay, let's move on up, see what else we've got to look at. Another example of how Hoover made this machine budget instead of the nice little adjustable control that we used to have here for the air freshener, there's just that little Hoover badge there to cover up the hole. Just above that Hoover nameplate and slightly below the carry handle we just have this here that says 500 signifying the wattage of this vacuum cleaner. Moving on up to the top of the bag door we have the bag door release pad branded Hoover but lacking underneath on some of the original turbo powers possibly all of them would have said turbo power underneath there. I used to love that font. Well, I still do, I don't st I still love it, yes. The font that Hoover wrote the name turbo power in, I'm sure a lot of you noticed the fonts. I noticed things like that. Anyway, this is the bag door release pad, which you press down and then you have access to the bag inside. Also on the top, another way that Hoover made this machine cheap is instead of having the mains on off switch at the back of the handle instead of that there is a blank piece to cover that up and Hoover put that there which negates the need there used to be a connection obviously all of you familiar with turbo powers will know but if you're not there used to be a connection inside the handle here and at the top of the bag compartment where the handle went in so when you push the handle in it connected up the switch to the motor so in order to avoid having to use those parts the switch has been put on the top of the bag compartment so on the back of the handle you can see that's where the switch would have been on the original turbo powers and as you can see Hoover have just blanked that off so here we have the only cord storage hook on the machine. You just had to bunch the cord up and put it over the hook. But for some reason it's still quick release. 
You'd think to make this vacuum even cheaper Hoover would have just put a fixed hook on there, but no, they left the original hook. So that's it to show you, apart from, there's another thing to show you at the back of the machine and then we'll have a look, well we haven't looked at the bag yet have we, and we haven't looked at the underside, but just further down, I can move the camera for you, ooh, squeaky camera, further down we have got of course the foot operated handle release, ah, oh, she's creaking. Press it once to release the handle to the operating position and then press it again to release the handle for cleaning under low furniture. While Turbo Power is having a lie down we might as well have a look at her bellows. So these bellows here are what connects the dust bag housing to the cleaner head. So obviously this is a dirty fan cleaner I'm sure you know. So all the dirt passes through the fan at the side, gets blown up through the bellows into the tube inside the bag compartment and then finally into the bag. And it's a little bit hard to see because it's gone a bit curly-whirly. There's the rating sticker showing you the model number. Can't see it from here but that should tell you somehow where, well where it's made, it says EC but I think it was made in Canberra Slang Scotland this one. The serial number should give us a date and there we go model U1050. Here's the underside of this old girl. She doesn't really like exposing her underneath bits but you need to see this. This Hoover activator is what does the business so, it's okay. People need to see. Just think of me as a doctor. This is the brilliant turbo power activator. And the turbo powers were the first cleaner to feature this design activator. It was revolutionary, I suppose, for Hoover at the time. Being all plastic and not having any replaceable brushes. Of course, the agitators that came before this had two replaceable brush strips and two beta bars. So they've done away with the single two beta bars and added these beta pads, these raised portions you can see, and they've got spiral brushes, quite rigid, and very long edge to edge cleaning brushes either side can see how they flare out so it does clean pretty close to the edge. As you can see this side they flared out and I think the other set will be flared out as well. Yes. So they do extend, I mean it's a very short gap so it will clean pretty close, pretty close to the edge of the carpet. So here we have the underside of the turbo power, would you like to see it going? Well, I'll turn it on, it's quite noisy. Let's find the switch. And a little bit musty as well. Anyway, it's a very efficient brush roll, the Hoover activator. Just above the brush roll we've got the two wheels that are connected to the height control so they move up and down according to the height you've selected to get access to the belt if you need to unblock the machine you have to undo one, two, three, four screws then the space plate comes off the belt is this side and the suction channel is that side so if it gets clogged up you need to take that off to uh, see if you can remove the clog now then, what I'm going to do is find the toolkit for this that I unboxed on my channel a while ago because when I unboxed it, I thought, yes, I'll show you this toolkit connected to the vacuum. And this is the only turbo power, sadly, that I have now, but at least it's a, a new, newish example. I'll have to see if I can get a few older turbo powers because, well, I do like them. They were 
sort of a classic, not as a not not as classic as say a junior or a senior, but to a certain generation, they were a classic Hoover upright the turbo powers. Anyway, I'm going to get the toolkit, and we'll see how it fits on the base of this cleaner. Well, here it is, model U1912 cleaning tools for the Hoover turbo power. If you want to see the unboxing of this. <laughs> It's not very exciting, but if you haven't seen it, you'll find that on my channel. Now the illustration on the box does not match the actual tools we get. The very early cleaning toolkit, this is how it looked. I had the toolkit for my first turbo power, and it did consist of this. The pan converter, the hose, crevice tool, extension tube, and the all-purpose brush. Now I believe it comes with a separate all-purpose nozzle and dusting brush. I think it did. It wasn't that long ago that I unboxed it. Here it is, it's the wrong way around. So yes, we've got crevice tool, all-purpose nozzle, dusting brush, Extension wand with the twist lock fit system. Pan converter. And a double stretch hose. Now I've never seen how far this machine stretches up the stairs, this hose. Looking at it, it's not going to stretch very far, is it? It's, it feels like it's got a bit of... It feels very sticky. Hmm. Odd. I'm sure it didn't feel sticky when I unboxed it. It's just, it's tacky. Oh, never mind. I wonder why that is. Hmm. Anyway, we need to attach the hose to the pan converter before we can attach it to the cleaner. So we'll just push it on, twist it until it, the lugs fit into the holes. And then we can at last what this toolkit has been crying out to do, it can at last fulfill its life's purpose and be fitted to the vacuum it was made for. So, dee dee dee, here it is. Obviously, just off, sh off camera. So to fit the tools, we needed to tilt the machine back, I don't know which is the best way to show you. Anyway, they have to be located at the front first, like this and then pushed back until they click. Ooh, are you going to click for me? You're not clicking. Oh. I'll just put the cleaner on its back. There we go, you might be able to see a bit better now. Okay. So you locate it at the front, just where the furniture guard is. And then it should click. Ah, but it's not clicking. Why? Why won't you click for me? Ah, oh, there. Whew, we got there in the end. So now it is clicked firmly in place and it should stay in place until we press this release catch. Another click and we can take the pan converter away. But we don't want it away, we want to, sh we want to put it back on. So. Hopefully it'll click a bit easier the second time. Slightly. So now, there we go. Oh, of course it is off-centred. So now we have the hose attached. And because it's low down, they shouldn't topple. I'll give it a bit of a tug. It will sort of follow you. It's fairly long when I'm stretching it out. It certainly won't reach up the stairs, but it's not bad. So it actually will follow. Follows wherever you go. Where's that from? What ad? Not this. I think that's from the Constellation. Floating on its own cushion of air. Floats with you through housework. I know them all by heart, you know. I'm sure a lot of you do as well. I'm sad. Now, What's even sadder is, my partner knows a lot of them now as well. We have this little um, thing. It's not a vacuum cleaner one I often quote, it's a washing machine one. 
I only have to say to him, have you heard the news that's going round? Then he will say, Hoover, Hoover, have gone and found the washing machine that means the end, the end of wash day. But often I would just say, wash day? And he'd say, just forget it. Something like that anyway. It's sad, but we do these things to amuse ourselves, don't we? In order to distract ourselves from the pointlessness of life. Oh, oh dear, it's getting to me. You obviously don't know this, but because you're just seeing my videos as normal, once or twice a week. But I'm in the middle, as I said earlier, of a big marathon of doing loads of these. Well, it keeps me, keeps me off the street, I suppose. Anyway, here we go. We've got the tools attached. And I've put the extension tube on and I've got the all-purpose nozzle on for doing my stairs and upholstery and curtains. If I want to do my dusting jobs, my pelmets, I can attach the dusting brush. And, of course, for all those awkward nooks and crannies around the home, there's the crevice tool to deal with the job. Yeah. And, ridiculously, there is a suction control. You don't need it, believe you me, you do not need it. But then again, I don't think I've ever felt the suction of this machine. It's a 500 watt, so it might have a little bit more oomph than the originals. It's going to be noisy again. Despite it being 500 watts, that... I would say that the 150 watt Hoover Dustette that I unboxed on my channel, the plastic dustette made in Hong Kong, I, I, I would say that's got more power. But then again, you see, the suction has less far to travel on the dustette because the fan for the dustette is just about that, well, that far away. If you think my thumb is the, fa the fan and the end of the tube here, end of the handle is the end of the nozzle on the dustette, it, it has that far to travel. So it's not far at all. With this machine, the suction has to go all the way through the hose first before it gets to the fan located in there. But anyway, let's see what it feels like with the all-purpose nozzle on. It feels a little bit better, to be honest, when you've got that nozzle on there, but... Uh, I can understand why people didn't bother with cleaning tools like this. They're a bit of a faff. A bit of a faff to connect. Suction's pretty poor. So you can understand why there's still so many of these on eBay, brand new and unused. The Electrolux series at the time, the 500 series that were around this time, were much better. My mum had a 502 with the tools and the tools got used because it was so much easier to fit them. You just lifted a flap at the back, pushed, twist and that was it. No having to lean the cleaner back and fiddle about with the pan converter. And the 500 series Electrolux had much greater suction power. They were clean fan design as well. But I still have a soft spot for this vacuum. It looks quite nice with the hose and everything on it, doesn't it? It all goes. So it's more or less your complete home cleaning system. Not. Okay, I've done enough reminiscing. Enough talking rubbish. Talking rubbish, actually. I'm going to look for my bag of filth. And yes, I'm going to put some dirt in here. But before I put any dirt in, I haven't shown you inside. Before I get it all filthy inside, I didn't open the bag door and show you the bag, etc. did I? So I'll just move the cleaning tools to one side again. We'll just have a look at the bag and then it's time for a bit of a demonstration. So as I showed you earlier, to access the bag, you press down on the bag door release pad and then that exposes the bag for you. Just pulls off. We'll look at the bag in a moment. Already, 
There's a little bit of dust. Look at that. Look at the muck in here, as Larry Grayson used to say. Bless him. So here, you won't know. You won't know who Larry Grayson is if you're not from the UK and if you're not a certain age. But uh, look him up. That's what the internet's for. Look up Larry Grayson, camp comic, host of the Generation Game. Oh, I used to love that. So there is the bag support tube that can be removed by two screws here and then you can just jiggle it out if it gets blocked and then you have access into the bellows as well. And we have inside remnants, is that the right word? Remnants? Not sure. Anyway you can see just as an archaeologist would dig up a site and reveal what went before if I angle the camera differently, you can see what went before. There you go. You can see here this round part where in the original turbo powers with the built-in air freshener, that would have been a black cover. It would have been a little spigot, I think that's the correct word. A little sticky up thing where you'd place the air freshener on, I think, or was it on the other part? It's so long. No, I think it was on the bit that, it was on the black bit that went on top. Please refresh my memory, any of you turbo power owners. I should check the internet, I'm sure there'll be a video. Um, but anyway, the air freshener, the round disc air freshener fitted in that area. And there's a little space here where the vent, the adjustable doobie would stick out. So you could adjust, I never found that worked at all. Set it to minimum, set it to maximum. It still smelt the same, but it did smell gorgeous, I must say. I'm having to go handheld now, excuse me. If it's shaking a bit. I haven't had a drink in weeks. It's a little bit there about uh, for maximum cleaning efficiency. Giving some tips about fitting the bag collar firmly over the support tube. Regular lolly. I can never get that word right. Empty the paper disposal bag. If it's not emptied regularly a blockage may occur. Use only genuine Hoover bags and their code is H4. Use, only use the special low nozzle setting for stuck down carpets and carpet tiles marked with a line on Turbo Master models. So the very low setting is designed for carpet tiles that hardly have any pile at all. So when I do the demo I'm going to do it on the setting above that. Use the bag anyway before I put it back in showing you the models that this bag fitted, the H4. Obviously it fitted all the turbo powers, the turbo masters. Oh, they were a lovely machine, the turbo masters. Wish I'd kept my U5080. Oh, I love that vacuum. And of course the turbo light, or as you know them in America, Elite. This one is a reusable, because we've got the clip on the bottom. So we can empty and reuse. And just push that back on the bag support collar tubey thingamajig there. Push it firmly, as Hoover say. Close the bag door, making sure that we've not trapped the bag. There we go. Right. It is with some trepidation that I throw some muck down to clean up, but I've done it earlier with my lovely Turbo Power 2, so the Turbo Power is going to get the same treatment, but she will be cleaned up before I put her back away in her box in semi-retirement.